This is a Baofang UV5 HT. It's a transceiver. And these are pretty popular now. They're about $30 uh, plus or minus on Amazon. And they are just a cheap Chinese radio, as you can imagine, for $30 but it has a lot of features and I'm actually quite familiar with this radio somebody asked me to do a video on it and uh, I know these fairly well because I work with a group of about a hundred people that use these and I programmed just about all of them and constructed the programs and all of that they're uh, super wide receive they're about 400 to 512 and 136 to 174 so as well as the ham bands they cover all the commercial stuff uh, so they'll do MERS and FRS and GMRS and all of that which they're kind of overpowered for those what's legal on those bands but it doesn't seem to stop people from using them there I uh, like I say it's a transceiver it also has an FM receiver in it And this one is barely a year old, and you can hear the pot's already staticky. So they're not very good quality for 30 bucks. They are handy and in this video I'll try and go over a lot of the knowledge that I, I know about antennas and programming and accessories and that. They do have a decent accessory port here which is uh, speaker and mic and you can actually do quite a bit with this. Um, I have all my local repeaters and simplex stuff programmed into this. Four, nine. Some of them I'm not going to be able to hit because I'm sitting four, down. So, and you can, it, it'll hold 127 uh, channels programmed, and you can set one display, you can set the displays to different things. The way I set them up is I have the top display show the channel name, and I have the bottom display show the, the, the frequency. So, if, for instance, if I'm on channel 40, for instance, and I want to see I want to see the frequency of channel 40 I could just hit a B and switch it to the bottom zero, four, zero. and I can see what the frequency is f for that name without having to go into the menu and change stuff around that's the way I set them up they're pretty sensitive 0.2 microvolts or something like that so they're actually really well and I have field tested these and they do seem to perform better than a lot of um, a lot of ham stuff but here's here's the qualifier with that because these are so wide band they overload very easy so if you're in a high signal environment or if you hook this to a good antenna where it's jamming a whole bunch of signals on adjacent frequencies into this the receiver goes deaf real quick so although it might perform 
as good or better in low signal environments as a commercial radio or a ham radio uh, it all goes to shit in a high high signal environment like if you take this up on a mountain where there's a bunch of repeaters this thing is going to go totally deaf it just cannot handle it it overloads so again it's thirty dollars um, you program these with a program called chirp that seems to be what most people use it's a freeware program uh, I'll go over that a little bit there's a couple little tricks to programming things you don't want to do uh, it'll also it's really easy just to do manual entry so you can just go from VFO to memory frequency mode you put it in frequency mode and you can just program anything you want in there pretty much punch it in One, six, two, five, five, zero. And you could just go right through the, you just hit the up, I, you might actually, can you scan? No, it won't scan, it'll scan on FM, but it won't, it, it's not like a scanner where you can scan a, uh, not to my knowledge anyway. You know, this is a this is a radio for convenience. If you're getting started in ham radio or something, um, you might want to consider this for your first radio. If you watch my videos, you know I am not a fan of China. I'm not a fan of giving them any more of our money. Uh, they already own enough of this place. So, I, I pretty much was forced to buy one. I, I, I stayed away from it for a long time. Um, this is for convenience. Like I said, I use this when I'm exploring mines or out doing something dirty. I don't care if I drop this down a mine shaft and it goes into water and sinks to the bottom and I never see it again. It's this has cost less than a tank of gas by far these days. So it's not it's not like you're actually you know it does have this cool flashlight in the top of it too, which actually comes in handy. The other thing I'll say is the battery life is pretty good on this. It seems like it'll run oh a good two days plus on the stock battery with just normal use. It's a lithium ion battery. The thing's pretty light. Uh, and a little bit about the programming. This is the programming cable and this is one of the more challenging things with this radio. You use a program called Chirp which is free. It's like a free open software program. And this plugs into the USB and then this thing here this double plug plugs into the side here there are about five different chipsets counterfeit chipsets that could be in this thing and it comes with a little driver CD that has one driver well that driver from reading online is often not the driver that matches that supports the chipset that's in this thing because there's so much counterfeit and my experience is if you don't get the right driver in the first time you can't get the driver that you installed out the thing will acknowledge the driver but it won't actually work like it says it's the right driver but it won't actually work so I had to reinstall Windows two or three times in one machine to figure out which driver because I couldn't get rid of the old driver no matter what I did I couldn't delete the driver 
So I finally got the right driver. So that's something to consider with this, that you gotta get the right driver the first time and it's really hit or miss. The other thing is if you're programming more than one of these radios, you need to download the file that comes, the image file that's in the radio and dump the program into it. You can't, for instance, if I had six of these radios sitting here and I wanted to put the same program in all of them or if I wanted, you know, my friend's program in my radio, I can't just have him send me my image, his image file and dump his image file into my radio. I have to keep, really should keep the image file that came with the radio in the radio. So the way I do this is I download the image file that's in my radio into Chirp. Then I do a control A and highlight all of the fields and delete them. And then I go to the image, then I open the image file that I want. I do a control A, I copy all of the fields that are in it and then I go back to my image file, I paste that information into my image file and then re-upload my image file with the pasted information back into my radio. I learned this the hard way. If I go and I download my image file and then upload it into a bunch of different radios, I'm going to screw them all up. They're all going to have weird malfunctions. Anything ranging from the FM radio won't work to squelch that won't work right. Uh, so you have to stick with the image file that came in your radio. You can't just overwrite it with another one you find online. If you do that, you're going to screw the radio up. There's a whole bunch of different firmwares that came in these. There's a whole bunch of different models. They, they change the name constantly. I think it's Pofung now or something. So you have to stick with the image file that came with your radio. They make an 8 watt version of this. I don't recommend it. 8 watts is just more RF radiation next to your head. A f uh, faster eating of the battery for what? 3 dB more. It's not that big of a deal. So go with the 4 watt version. You don't need 8 watts coming out next to your head. That's just not not even not even cool. There's a bunch of different antennas available for these. Um, antenna and screws. It's got an SMA male in there. You can get a whole bunch of adapters. This is SMA male, the 259 female. So this gives you the option to hook it to an antenna on top of your car or whatever. You can get SMA to PL uh, 259, which this is. You can get SMA to N. You can get SMA to uh, BNC. There's a lot of options with this, of course. Uh, the antenna connector, this has actually been really solid, like this, the where this is put in here. I'm surprised I haven't broken it out. I've dropped this thing. Um, it's actually a pretty sturdy radio. I can't really complain about that. It's just as you can see, you know, the paint's wearing off the buttons, the volume control staticky, you know, probably less than a year into it and I probably use it once a month if that. And the prints wearing off the front. You know, it's just not very good quality. I made a full duplex repeater for this which uses two isolation, audio isolation transformers because when you connect two of these radios together um, the it's interesting the way this mic plug works. Basically in here the speaker ground and the mic ground when you tie those two together it keys the radio up. So that makes this thing real interesting when trying to ad adapt it to headsets and speaker mics. They do make a speaker mic for this. I think it's five bucks. Uh, but as far as adapting this, we were trying to adapt this to a military headset and it was just a no-go because the on the military headset the 
the mic uh, ground and the, the headset speaker ground was the same and of course if you connect that here you key the radio up so you really need to analyze the, these ports and the way these ports are wired if you're thinking about adapting but yes I did make successfully a repeater with two audio isolation transformers and I think a few resistors and two of these radios and what I did was I used two separate antennas on two separate vertical planes separated about 50 feet apart so I had the radios in the middle with 50 feet of coax coming out of here going off to an antenna 25 feet that way and the other radio here with another piece of coax going the opposite way with an antenna so I had the radio the antennas spaced 50 feet apart on different horizontal or vertical planes different heights that way it would keep um, the radio that was transmitting from murdering the sensitivity on the radio that was receiving so yeah a lot of a lot of fun you can have am I advocating or suggesting you should go out and buy one of these well again I'm not a fan of supporting China but do what you gotta do if you're seriously into ham radio and want serious reliability I would buy a Yesu or a Kenwood or an ICOM or some brand name uh, I'll take my I'll take my Motorola commercial radios any day or my GE commercial radios any day over this um, as far as reliability and just I mean this thing it, it just it's cheap it's thirty dollars it's cheap this is the charger for it um, takes it I don't know three or four hours to charge from dead battery life is impressive like I said this has some weird input power it's like input DC 10 volts so you can't you can't just plug this into your cigarette lighter uh, you need to use an inverter if you're gonna charge it in your car this is my repeater interface box and somebody sells one of these on eBay but it's a complete joke the one that they sell is just a wire going straight through where this one I actually went and constructed it with an audio isolation transformer and some other um, components capacitors and resistors and a uh, RF choke to keep the RF from causing feedback uh, this is what you use for a full duplex repeater like I said you need to separate the antennas at least 50 feet uh, the way you do it is you use two radios and you put the transmitting radio on Vox and you put the receive you just have the receiving radio feeding audio into one side and then what this does is it isolates the radios and it feeds this back out on uh, into the vo into the mic input and when the receiving radio picks up audio it feeds it through into the mic input and the Vox triggers and starts the transmitting radio transmitting so there's usually a delay that cuts off the beginning of your transmission the first part of the word also this radio uses an electret mic so it's applying a three volt bias or something like that on the mic input so you have to isolate um, that that 3.3 volt bias from the radio you're connected to and you can't have it connected straight to an audio isolation transformer because then that'll uh, effectively just short that bias voltage out and it'll cause the radio to malfunction so yeah it takes a little bit a little bit of knowledge and and testing to get an actual repeater interface box that works right and this one works right I've tested this in the field very effective 
antenna separation is really the key but this thing really works well and a, a correction the radio both receives and transmits wideband I know I said it receives wide but it will receive and transmit on anything from 400 to 512 and 136 to 174 so it's not just receive only like a lot of ham radios that are locked down so that's a quick overview on this I might have forgot something I'll add it in at the end um, these things are popular with the prepper and survivalist community and all of that which I kind of find that hard to understand because you would think that a patriot would want to buy something made in America at least that's the way I feel about it that's why I end up rolling with mostly vintage or older Motorola commercial gear um, a lot of options a lot of accessories there's probably 40 different antennas that are offered for this thing do any of them perform um, any better than any other ones I don't know I haven't seen any direct proof of that you know it's it's with radio it's all about line of sight and where you are and reflections and multipath and uh, adjacent signal interference and there's a whole bunch of parameters and things that can affect it you know you see people hanging rat tail wires off of this and and all this stuff and that to me is just ludicrous I think if you actually took the thing into a chamber and tested it you would see no difference and there's people that are going to argue with me to the death about that but you know what they manufacture these things and theoretically you think they would test them so that the design of the antenna has an adequate ground plane and they're not going to they're not going to sacrifice intentionally sacrifice performance uh, for anything that's what makes things sell so um, straight out of the box it works pretty good for 30 bucks you, know, you can't you can't blame it don't try and improve it use it the way it is out of the box you're not going to improve it if you want to improve it spend real money and get a real radio and a real antenna you know when it comes to radio antenna is everything antenna is makes the biggest difference it's money the money best spent is on antenna not power you know doubling the power doesn't make that big of a difference a lot of times I'll play with radios and I'll double the power nobody even I'll go from a 40 watt radio to 120 watts and nobody can even tell so anyway uh, enough ranting let me see if I covered it all I covered the programming don't dump don't dump a foreign image file into your radio make sure that you stick with the image file that it came with from the factory if you happen to ruin it there's a website that has all of the stock image files and you can download it and start over again but you want to avoid that there's no reason to do that and the other thing I would say about this is you know try and stay within the law when it comes to radio it's the FCC is there for a reason and it's when it comes to spectrum and band usage and that it's it's a good thing I know there's some corruption with it and and that it does what generates the most money for itself and is not always best for the public but when it comes to this stuff you don't want to be you know transmitting out a band and you know talking to your friends driving down the road talking to your friends right in the middle of the the police band or the public safety band or you know uh, anything else so 
you want to be respectful of band planning and that and the guidelines that the FCC has set up. So um, there you go.